result fetch array now this function is another built-in one and it has a couple different parameters that we can pass in and if we pass in my squealy I don't even know if that's how you say it so sh what this means as is we basically want to take the result set which is hopefully a list of messages and we want to get it as an associative array now the difference between an associative array rather than a regular array and why I prefer this is because you can see in text what it's returning rather than 0, 1, 2 you're gonna see the words color username posted on so on and so forth and it makes it a lot easier whenever you're coding so the first thing we want to do is now that we have an array that we can work with we on we want to take it and store it in easy to work with variables so remember the row is basically the array that's the name of the array we said this variable row is equal to the array that it returned so in order to get any single element from an associative array you first put the name of the array and then you put the name or excuse me this is yeah message ID and you need to put it in between single quotation marks like that and now we can just go ahead and say ID instead of this variable whenever we're working with it it makes it a whole lot easier and guys this is why I prefer an associative array because it's a lot easier to see these rather than row 0 row 1 row 2 so on and so forth so now that we got the ID let's go ahead and return a couple more things basically everything that we need the color and this is the color of the text and remember the ID was basically the primary key in your database the ID number of the message the color like I said is the color um, after this you have the users username and let's just go ahead and store this is username and in the database we wrote user underscore name now the last couple things were time and remember the column in the database was posted on and let me copy this biatch real quick I'm very vulgar today what is wrong with that you usually don't even cost at all so the message is the big daddy that we want and we just stored this is message in the database and now we basically have all the information that we need from the database we asked the database if there are any new messages for each message give us the ID number the color of the font the username the time that they posted it in the message itself so you're like alright we're good to go right well now we have to do one more little thing and that is format each message properly in your XML file so this is how you do that remember everything we're storing in this response variable which is basically the XML file itself so the first thing we need to add to it is the ID tags and this is how we're going to do it and actually if you set it up like this it's probably the easiest way but everything in between single quotation marks all of your XML tags and the first one is ID and also you end it with ID now in between those ID tags the value that we have to pass in is the ID variable but you can't just do this you have to actually make your concatenate or whatever the heck they're called so basically what we're saying is the first tag that we want in each a uh, little element in our XML file is the ID number of the message so we start the tag because that's just how XML file works we end the tag and in between it as the value is whatever we returned from the database whatever we got from the database now the cool thing is if you formatted it like I just did we can just go ahead and copy this and change all this crap so actually let me put let me think color time username message so color time username message and I'll show you guys what the heck I was just talking about wow that's kind of embarrassing color 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 time 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 actually I can just go ahead and put 
name, name, username, and just copy this little mofo right here. Message, message, message. Boom, roasted. Now, one last line that we need to do, and this is just for good housekeeping practices, is that whenever we are done with this, what we would like to do is we need to close the result, and this is just for, you know, like I said, just ha housekeeping. In order to do that, just put close parentheses, and what this does is it basically closes the database connection. So now we can actually tighten all this up just because I hate when things are loose. And let me go ahead and explain to you guys one last time what we did. If I was blabbering and cussing too much, then this will make sense. In the last video, we queried all the messages. We got all the new messages that we wanted to display to the user. Now, what we needed to do before we send them, you know, a big long query result because that wouldn't look good on their browser, we wanted to format it as a proper XML response. So, the, what we did is we basically stored an XML file in a variable, we added all the tags, and then we returned the variable right here, which basically returned an XML file so later on you can sift through and read all your messages and they look real nice now in this if statement we're basically saying in everyday terms if we have results or any new messages then go ahead and loop through all those messages now get every single piece of information that you need and then add it properly properly formatted to an XML file and once you're done with that, close your database connection because that's the proper thing you have to do and then return the XML file. Basically send it off. That's what we're going to be doing so the browser can take care of it. So how easy is that? How freaking awesome. Congratulations. I'm going to say freaking a couple more, couple more times. And by the way, um, this has nothing to do with the uh, video I just made. but. I'm going to be releasing all of the source code for the social network probably one week from today on you know hopefully May 17th so if you guys click on the link below Bucky's room social network go to that check it out it's going to be open source one week from today pretty cool so anyways thank you guys and uh, in the next tutorial we're gonna be finishing up this file I'll see you then